All right, we are recording. All right, good evening and welcome everybody to the November 4th Village of Woodbury Planning Board meeting. I'm your chair, Chris Garber, and I welcome everybody this evening. Um, with that said, I ask that everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> And again, as always, I apologize if it looks like I'm looking away. I'll be admitting people in and out of the waiting room uh, as we do have a public hearing tonight. So do excuse me for that. Um, let's see. First matter of the business. Has the board had a chance to look over the minutes of the October 7th meeting? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can I any questions on those? All right. So I'll make a motion to... I'll accept the October 7th minutes as printed. I'll I'll second it. Uh, second by Robert. Yeah. Uh, on the question. All right. Ready? I second it. Yeah. Okay. Aye. <laughs> I abstain. Sandy abstains. And then four ayes. Yes. Aye. Aye. Has the board had a chance to review the minutes from October the 21st meeting? Yes. Um, can I make a motion to accept the October 21st minutes as planned? A second. Second by Sandy. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, five eyes. Thank you very much. Sorry, a couple people in the waiting room. All right, we're just going to change the agenda up quickly uh, this evening. We're just going to go with Timely Signs Heritage Financial first. Uh, review revised application for ARB of a proposed color of the directory and wall sign for Hudson Heritage Bank located in Strip Mall at 273 Route 32 in Central Valley. Said property is known on the Village of Woodbury tax map, sections 230, block 4, lot 4.1. I believe I saw the applicant. There you go, Joe. You're here, right? You're here for everything. I am present. All right. Just uh, really quick, uh, I know there was some confusion at the last meeting about what you guys are actually here for or looking to do. So if you just give us a quick rundown of what you're looking to accomplish, and we'll go from there. Absolutely. Uh, and I apologize for not being able to log on in the last meeting, um, but I'm here tonight. So uh, it's a pretty straightforward request. Uh, what we're currently looking for is, is there is a uh, existing sign box above uh, Heritage Financial Credit Union uh, at the 273 Route 32 address, uh, as well as a freestanding sign that's double-sided. Our request this evening is to change the face in that um, sign box above, uh, above the branch, as well as the two sides of the existing uh, monument sign. Uh, but what we are requesting is the use of the new Heritage uh, Financial Credit Union uh, navy blue and khaki color, uh, which is in uh, which is different than the royal blue uh, and white that is uh, being used by the tenants uh, currently, with the exception of Bagel World. And this is just on the sign above the bank, correct? You're not looking to change the sign on the freestanding outside? Yeah, or? they are. No, we are looking to change uh, the tenant panels from the royal blue and white uh, to the navy blue and khaki, both on the uh, main monument sign as well as the sign face uh, change for above the, uh, the branch in the existing uh, sign cabinet. Okay, thank you. All right. Natalie, you want to go ahead? Thanks, Chris. Uh, the applicant distributed an email on Monday responding to most of the comments in our memo, and I think they succinctly described their request to you tonight. Um, our only remaining question regarding the wall sign is 
I understand that they um, acquired the former Diagostino space, and we aren't sure if that wall cab or that sign cabinet that is above that storefront is proposed to remain or be removed. Um, so we think that that would be something that the applicant could clarify before you. And then also um, you could consider whether or not the relationship between the existing cabinet uh, that they are proposing to maintain is uh, spatially acceptable to you compared to the others. Um, other than that, uh, although they are requesting the change to the multi-tenant directory sign and Bagel World previously did install that incorrectly. Um, we believe that's been corrected. Uh, yes. So um, if you're being consistent with your prior actions, um, then you may not approve that, um, the change in colors that is. And other than that, as long as the colors that are being proposed are acceptable to you, uh, we believe that you could schedule a public hearing at this time and that's all we have. Thank you, Natalie. Anybody from the board has questions for Natalie? Rick? Oh. <laughs> okay. Questions from the board for the applicant? Just, uh, I mean, uh, is the applicant aware that uh, Bagel World did change to the blue and white? It's now uniform. Okay, I wasn't, um, the, the photo that I have was probably only a few weeks ago, so I think they may have changed it since the last meeting. Um, I, I've, I sent out a photograph of, um, you know, I, I don't know, do you know when that, that Bagel World sign was uh, edited? It was changed, I think, a few months ago. Uh, I, your your um, picture looked like it was taken in the snow. Yeah, there's snow in that picture. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there is snow in that picture, but I actually have a survey of it uh, since our last meeting, and I took photographs again, and that Bagel World sign was still up on the monument sign, I believe. If it has changed since the last meeting, um, that may be different, but we had done a survey the Tuesday after the uh, the last meeting and that photograph came through that it was still up. If it's changed, I mean, I, I would accept, I haven't been I haven't been past it since our last meeting. So if it's changed since the last meeting or since our last survey, um, I can certainly understand that. But I mean, it was uh, black and green the last time I had seen it. Yeah, what, uh, what had happened was is your application triggered a review. Uh, what we noticed was that the only thing that was approved for Bagel World was a sign above the site. The multi-tenant sign was actually never supposed to have been installed. Uh, I so think the tenant, the tenant withdrew it, actually. They re well, withdrew that portion of their request. They installed it. The building inspector noticed, with the, asked them to put it back to the color that it was supposed to be because it was never approved. So that but, regard, but regardless of what Bagel World has done with their sign, it's a matter of enforcement. Um, when you're coming before this board, you have to have something that conforms. Correct. So the, the reason that we presented it was that we were under the impression that they had gotten permission. Uh, we didn't go into the, into the past of what Bagel World had done. So if the request is that we have to follow the blue and white, and that's the, that's the standard set for the tenants, uh, then we would follow that standard. Um, we were just under the impression that the precedent had been set that Bagel World and you were able to use your uh, logo colors for the monument based on what other tenants had done. Understood. Anybody else on the board have questions for the applicant? Mm -mm. No. Rick, do you have anything else? Other than we need to uh, schedule a public hearing. Right, but I think the question is going to be, does the applicant want to modify their application, right, to withdraw the change to the multi-tenant sign? Uh, we will we'll withdraw the change to uh, the multi-tenant sign and re revert back to actually what it is currently. We had received a permit um, for the, the blue that matches uh, the plaza originally. Um, the bank had changed their name and their logo colors. We had actually changed out the faces to match the standard blue 
that has been used throughout the plaza. So currently, you know, right now that tenant panel is the royal blue that matches the plaza. Uh, we were proposing to go for a color change, so we would we would withdraw that request because we've already received a permit for um, for the tenant panel in the blue and white that is accepted. Okay. So that exists. All right. So then we just need to schedule a public hearing to change the the side panel, and it is just. In the picture that you had submitted on 1016 revision 02, um, that is a sign panel that's staying, nothing else is changing. You just take it, taking that panel out and putting the new one in with this darker, dark blue and almost gold color. Correct. Uh, nothing changes on the sign. The sign is the same size. Um, the only thing that's changing is the, is the face plate. Okay. No lighting, no lighting change, um, no significant. Uh, change other than the face itself, like for light swap. Does the board feel okay with setting a public hearing then? Yes, no problem. We'll go with that. All right, I'll make a motion to add this to our November 18th agenda for a public hearing. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, sir. Well, we will see you then. Excellent. Thanks, What's guys. What's the date of that, Chris? I'm sorry. 18th. Our next Thank meeting. You. <clears throat> we'll be we'll get an email notification from Maria. Yes. Excellent. Thanks guys. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is shops at Woodbury. Public hearing for proposed revised site plan submitted for a mixed use development to include retail stores, restaurants, and a hotel. Said properties located at the intersection of Route 32 and Losey Lane and is known as the Village of Woodbury Tax Map Section 225. Block one, lock 34.1 and 34.22. Uh, just for the information, this public hearing was noticed in, on Friday, October 30th. Who is, who is uh, taking the lead for the applicant tonight? Steve? Uh, Mr. Dominic? Chairman, this is Dominic Cradisco. Uh, thank, first of all, let me say uh, thank you for having and holding the public hearing. And I also wanted to apologize. I was not able to make your last meeting. So uh, the fact that uh, you're moving forward and even during the pandemic and holding public hearings is very much appreciated. So uh, thank you all. And it's all, it's good to see you all as well. Uh, I am here uh, tonight with Steven Esposito, Aaron Goldklang, Kevin Van Heis, and John Canning, I believe is here as well. Uh, all in connection on behalf of the shops at Woodbury. I'm sure, uh, and I'll turn it over to Kevin in, in just a moment, but I'm sure you're all familiar with the fact that this is the site that's across from the Woodbury Center that was previously approved and started construction for Cabela's, uh, but then when Cabela's uh, stopped, it was ultimately sold and transferred to the shops at Woodbury, uh, and uh, they are proposing commercial development on this site. Uh, I know that you've seen the plans a, a number of times, but I'm sure that we do have some members of the public here. And so if it's, if it's helpful for the board, I'd turn it over to both Steve and Kevin. Kevin is able to share his screen so we can put the plans up if that's helpful. And uh, we can uh, provide a uh, overview of, of the proposal and, and uh, then uh, turn it over to the public if you would. Sure. You wanna to try to share your screen, Kevin? Still saying disabled. Oh, hold on. You want to give it a shot again? Okay, can you see that? Yep. Okay, I can run through this really quickly. There's not been obviously any changes since we we were before you last for the benefit of the public. Uh, we are proposing a mix of retail, restaurant, fast food, and hotel uses on the site. Uh, we've been before the Zoning Board of Appeal and have um, received variances to support this plan. Um, we have made, based on comments we received from the board's engineer, traffic engineer, and planner, um, some really minor modifications that are reflected here. Those have been reviewed or at least have been made in conjunction with coordination with NISDOT. 
Uh, those are some minor changes to the entrance and exit to the park and ride, a minor change to the alignment of the, of the driveway. Um, we, in discussion, uh, two planning board meetings ago, there was uh, a request to provide more green space. So we removed um, some parking yeah, in this area here to facilitate that, which can be added back um, if necessary. We're in the process of responding to the comments that we received prior to the last planning board meeting from both uh, the village of Harriman for the water distribution plan, as well as the Woodbury um, comments related to the site plan. Natalie? Thank you, um, since there were no new materials received, we don't have much to report on other than um, some correspondence that occurred since the last meeting uh, regarding the applicant's request for an ESO meeting and then also lo loading birth requirements. Uh, we did uh, provide a copy of our carryover memorandum to the applicant, so they should be aware um, of the requirements for the loading births and then uh, it's at their discretion to request the ESO meeting. And other than that, this is scheduled for public hear hearing and we have nothing further. Thank you, Natalie. Members of the board want me to go out to the public first? Yes. Okay, as this is a public hearing, um, when you, if you are speaking on this application, I ask that you state your full name and the city that you are from uh, for the record. Uh, I ask that you, keep your comments limited and uh, limited to three minutes. And I ask that you address the board directly and not the applicants or any of the consultants. And we will do our best uh, to can, we can to address any concerns that come up this evening. Um, I am simply just going to go uh, in order that I see people on my screen. Uh, and I apologize if I mispronounce anybody's name. Um, it's, I just don't take it personal. So uh, with that, the first person I see is Susie. Hi, my name is Susie Sohn. I am an attorney at Bluestein Shapiro Rich and Barone, and our firm represents the successor trustees of the 1960s trusts established by Will William Avril Harriman um, on behalf of his grandchildren. Um, two of his grandchildren were on the, at the previous uh, PB hearing. They may be here tonight, um, David Mortimer and Avril Mortimer. Um, and on behalf of our, our clients, we do have some questions about the project. Um, we first wanted to get some verification about the record owner and applicant. We understand it's a shops at Woodbury LLC. Um, who is the, who are the members of that entity? Do we have that information? Is it, I see it's Basia as the screen name. Is it Aaron Goldclay? Rick, don't we have the LLC disclosure form? We did. Yes. Um, a couple of things. One, you know, this is a public hearing to hear uh, comments relative to your site plan approval. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to have some information, they can ask for that. Um, and the board will see what it uh, can do to respond at a different time. But I don't think that it makes sense to uh, divert to answer a lot of uh, questions along these lines. There is an LLC disclosure form that um, I believe was um, filled out and it would be in the file in the building department. Okay, my main uh, point of asking these questions, thank you, Rick, um, is, uh, I wanna understand what other projects the um, record owner has done in the area, um, in Orange County or Rockland County. Are we able to have more disclosure on that at this point? I don't think there's anything that's been presented to the planning board with respect to their other projects. We typically don't ask um, for that information, um, but to the extent that any information has been requested or has been submitted, even if unrequested, would either be um, found in the minutes or in the file itself. And which file you're talking about? The building uh, department. Building department. Okay. And um, 
and how we would also like to get a sense of the successes and failures of any projects that the record owner has been involved in, including any bankruptcies. Again, to the extent that anything is in the file, you're uh, more than welcome to review it. Um, the board has not requested that information of the applicant specifically, uh, nor to my knowledge does it do that on any other application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we, are we aware of who is funding this project? Do we have that information? Um, I don't believe, I mean, there might be some information the f in the file with respect to certain people or entities um, and whether or not they are funding it, I do not know and to what extent. Um, again, that's not something that is typically part of the site plan review and um, to my knowledge on this application as is typical with others, we have not asked for that information. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why the Mortimers are interested in these in this site and this hearing is that this site is the subject of a restrictive covenant. Um, you may be aware that there is a fast food restrictive covenant um, encumbering a lots 34.1 and 34.2. So we would like to know um, whether, you know, the board or the applicant has any information, any information about the lender being aware of this restrictive covenant encumbering the properties. Yeah, I, I have the planning board nor I uh, would have no knowledge of whether or not the lender is aware of that or not. And it wouldn't be the inappropriate role of the uh, board to reach out to any lenders to, um, to, to advise them of various issues with respect to a project. I will tell you that um, my general understanding of um, such restrictive covenants is different than the letter that was recently submitted by your partner Gardner. Um, but, um, you know, I have not looked at the cases that Tad had put in there, uh, but on behalf of the planning board, I will be responding to that letter. Okay. Um, the last planning board meeting mentioned a Melody Lane project. Is that right? No, it's not a Melody Lane okay. project. What it is, is that there is a portion of this project that is a paper road um, owned by the village of Woodbury. Um, and in order for this project to proceed, the village of Woodbury would have to um, give or sell that particular parcel to this applicant. It had previously done so with the prior applicant, Cabela's, um, but that was contingent upon Cabela's actually uh, being substantially complete for uh, that grant um, to be effective. Uh, they did not achieve that status and therefore um, that grant was not effective. Um, the applicant has asked the Board of Trustees, um, uh, inquired of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Woodbury to sell the property to it. Um, there are some documents on file with the Village Board of Trustees. Village Board of Trustees has asked for some additional information and I believe that will be forthcoming at some point in time. So what exactly is the interrelation between that um, conveyance and then the subject project? It is part of the property for which they're asking for a site plan and they don't own it. Gotcha. Have there been any traffic um, studies or uh, studies or uh, reviews about that interrelation? There have been traffic studies. I don't know if, to my knowledge, it hasn't been a traffic study dealing with that particular paper road, but there have been many traffic studies and um, with respect to this project. Um, are there plans to do a traffic study uh, in connection with Melody Lane in this project further? The village owned parcel is a paper road. It's not a real road. Okay. Um, and so what is, oh, um, what's the significance of it being a paper road where you wouldn't need to do it's it? Just a, it's just a, it, although it's called that, it's just a parcel of land, vacant land. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the hotel, um, I, I understand it's, it's planned to be five stories rather than three. Yes. Okay. Um, was that an increase over three or uh, just 
filling filling in on that factors here. Right. My understanding, it's always been that since this project has been in front of this board. Okay. All right. So five stories. Um, and um, why? Uh, the question is why would why would it be planned for five stories when it would have when that height would have a significant impact on the increased need for parking spaces, the loss of the ridge line and green space, um, further destruction of the ridge preserva preservation view corridor. The it hotel overlay district allows for that size of a structure in this area. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, going on to, I'm interested in traf in the traffic studies. Um, I did not see any kind of CEQA studies in the planning board's document center. I understand that the applicant used Cabela's previous secret studies, is that correct? Yes. There was a, uh, I believe a consistency determination by this board with respect to seeker. Mm -hmm. And are those available to the public? Absolutely. Um, where are they located? <clears throat> I believe the consistency statement, uh, I, I can't recall now whether it was a separate resolution that was in writing or is just a motion that was approved at a meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was a motion approved at a planning board meeting in uh, January okay. 2019. Uh, there was a traffic. I'm Again. sorry, I'm having trouble yeah. hearing you. <clears throat> Whoever, <clears throat> excuse me, whoever was speaking said there was something in January 2019. I'm having trouble hearing you, however, if you could repeat yourself. Did, did you, did, I'm not sure who spoke. Could someone fill me in on who the, that was, did you know that was not for the applicant? Can you, I'm sorry, can you say that again? That was Steve Esposito. Oh, Steve. Hi, Steve. Um, I've spoken with you before, <laughs> but just uh, on other things. Um, so what happened in January 2019? Can't hear you, Steve. Yes, uh, Steve, this is Dominic Cradisco. Steve is having some uh, uh, technical difficulties. His laptop uh, uh, is not picking up his audio signal, so he's been trying to dial in, but that's, uh, uh, he's been having some uh, challenges there. I can answer the question. The board had previously made a determination that uh, this project uh, with its environmental impacts are consistent with the previously approved and under construction impacts associated with the uh, Cabela's project. Um, and so uh, that concluded the seeker process and that was done by motion. Mm -hmm. I see, and that, that's what happened. The motion was what happened in January, 2019. Um, so uh, I, I have not been able to review those seeker studies. I'm, is that something that is available online? I could not find them. It's available um, in the building department's file. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what's online, but all of the prior Cabela's seeker, as well as the seeker uh, consistency determination made for this project is part of the record. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that something that would normally be available in the planning uh, board's document center? Not necessarily. Okay, so um, one of the, one of the uh, aspects of that um, study, yeah, I mean, we're interested in the traffic studies. So, um, so one of the questions is, how is the anticipated traffic that will be generated by fast food with drive-throughs different um, if there were no fast food operations? Has that kind of study been done? All right, what is typical, Susie, with respect to this planning board and many others, is that um, public hearings don't end up to be um, this extended back and forth of, of answering questions and, uh, and sort of discussion. It's an opportunity for the planning board to hear comments from the public um, so that it, its decision-making can be better informed. 
And sometimes there are uh, questions that to be asked. Um, sometimes they're simple and they can be easily answered. Uh, other times it would just have to take um, a look at the record. Um, but it's not sort of an opportunity to have the planning board uh, respond to every inquiry or concern that you have. If you have a concern about traffic, present the traffic concern that you have, and that will be considered by the board when it's making its decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that, Rick. Um, I mean, you know, as, as, as a public hearing, this is an opportunity to get more information about the project. And um, we do have concerns about the traffic impact that fast food, um, that the three fast food restaurants with drive food drive throughs would have on the area. And what um, I'm saying is that there have been detailed traffic studies by the applicant, um, responsive traffic analysis by the planning board's traffic engineer, and all of those documents are in the planning board file. Um, I okay. I did not see um, the traffic studies in the planning board file. I didn't see any kind of environmental assessment form. Um, or any kind of other environmental diligence uh, analysis in the plan. Have you looked? You, have you looked at the building department file, or just what's online? No, just what's online. Yeah. Okay. Please make an um, an opportunity. Make a um, appointment to look at the file in the building department. There's <laughs> a lot enough. of things in there. Fair enough. Um, I have uh, j just a couple more points and questions to go through here. Um, so are we saying that there was, there has not been any kind of analysis done fast food versus not fast food with drive throughs No, I didn't say that at all. I just said that there were traffic studies and they analyzed all of the traffic, including the various demands, um, and the assumptions that were built into those traffic studies and the responsive analysis by the planning board's engineer. Mm -hmm. Did the Cabela's site have fast food proposals? Uh, not to my knowledge, but I really don't recall um, the, all of the specifics of the Cabela's project. Mm -hmm. So if there were none, it wouldn't have had that kind of analysis that I'm asking about now. Um, I'm, not, all, there were, all, I'm, not, I'm not talking about just the traffic analyses that were done by Cabela's. There were also traffic analyses that were done by shops at Woodbury that would be in the file. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Um, Alternatives under CICRA? Um, has a planning board considered alternatives under CICRA approval, approval uh, for sit-down restaurants as opposed to three proposed fast food restaurants? The, what the planning board considered will be in the record, both in the minutes as well as in the documents. And they made a consistency finding based upon the uh, prior CICRA um, analysis as well uh, under Cabela's and they found that it was consistent with that determination. And mm -hmm. for the particulars, you have to go through the, the file. None of us have that at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. So the number of vehicle trips generated per hour for fast food operations, is that something that would be in the file as well? If it exists, it would be in the file. Has the planning board considered the feasibility of approving this project without fast food operations with drive throughs the planning board is still considering this particular project um, and various aspects of it. Um, it's, it. This isn't at the very end of the situation is asked to have a public hearing so the planning board can be better informed of it. Um, but if you have a concern with respect to that, present your concern and that will be considered by the planning board. Okay. I mean, I think the overarching concern, and Rick, I appreciate, I've been, I know I've taken more than three minutes uh, that the chair offered, and I appreciate your patience in answering all these questions. Um, you know, the overarching concern is that um, there is this, you know, there, there is this fast food uh, restrictive covenant on the property. Um, you know, the Harriman family's been in, as everyone knows here, they've been in this area for, um, since the 1880s, over 135 years. And all of the sites all in and around this, this subject site, you know, we're talking about the transportation hub with Route, thir route 17, 32, um, I-87, the Monroe Woodbury Schools, Woodbury Common, they're all a result of the Harriman's contributions to the community. So, you know, this uh, project, you know, is, um, I've seen the, the applicants, um, 
uh, determination that, you know, there's been a lot of development in this area. There's been topographical kind of, um, you know, uh, sh you know, uh, destruction of the area. And, um, and meanwhile, there's not a lot of ridgeline preservation concerns or scenic backdrop concerns. And the Harrimans uh, strongly disagree with that. Um, the whole area is surrounded by you know, mountains and trees and a lot of the 40,000 acres that originally was within their stewardship. Um, so that is something that, that is a comment I think that the planning board should take into consideration. Um, that kind of preservation of um, that intended, uh, you know, scenic backdrop and a uh, ridgeline uh, view issue. Um, I mean, to the extent that, you know, that any questions that I've asked here um, have not been answered, I would ask that the planning board keep this hearing open until we have had an opportunity to review or have those questions answered. Um, I'm not sure if that's something the chair can grant now or, uh, you know. It, it's going to be something that at the, um, at some point in time uh, this evening, the board will decide whether or not to close the public hearing or whether or not to keep it open. Mm -hmm. And that would be by vote of the board? That's correct. Okay. Well, I would urge the board to consider keeping the public hearing open um, pending the uh, pending the uh, answers to the questions I've I've posed tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your input, Susie. Okay. Moving on, Charles Bazaldo. Bazidlo, probably. So, thank you, Rick. Always keep me on the straight and narrow. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. So, hold on a second. Let me. Oh, there I am, alive. Okay, very good. Uh, good evening, board. Um, my name is Charlie Bazidlo. I'm an attorney up in uh, Pine Bush, New York. Uh, as some of the board members may know, uh, my client is uh, Millwood Place, the uh, developers, owners of the uh, hotel over as part of the Woodbury Center across the street from this project. Um, I, I'll keep my comments uh, uh, short tonight. Uh, and again, you know, to uh, reiterate what the last speaker said, I would hope that the board would keep the, keep the public hearing open because uh, I think there are several questions about this project that still need to be answered. Uh, but th the main gist of uh, what I want to ask the board about tonight or, you know, bring to the board's attention tonight is uh, the issue of, of the Seeger analysis that's been done on this project. Uh, I know it seems to be the applicant's position that uh, there was, uh, I guess what's called a, a term of art here, a secret consistency determination that was issued by this board and it was just by a, vo a voice vote uh, sometime back in early 2019. And uh, as you look uh, at the records that are available online on the planning board's website, uh, there, there's nothing there from what this project looked like in late 2018, early 2019. So it's really hard to know how this project has changed since the time the board made that decision. Uh, a couple of issues I, I know that the board has raised uh, in the interim uh, is the idea of the, the height of the hotel, uh, the, the overall sewer demand of this project versus what the what Capella's was uh, at the time it was being planned. Uh, there's an issue about parking uh, space waivers, which I think is pretty significant on this project from a requirement of 578 spaces down to somewhere around 467, 470, somewhere in there. Uh, and just the idea of examining uh, what this site looks like before they start construction of the shopping center or potentially start construction of the shopping center. Uh, you know, as the applicant has, uh, you know, and I believe the board's aware of too, this site has changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. And each one of those changes, whether done by the DOT, um, the contractor for the DOT bringing material onto this site to change the grade, uh, all, those, all those projects, major that they were, were all examined separately under Seeker. 
And so I think, I think there's a real question about the overall seeker segmentation on this project. And it's a large project. You know, the, the overall square footage of this project, the overall acreage of disturbance would qualify this project as, as a type one action. And as I know, the board and their council is aware, you know, type one actions typically require full environmental impact statements or certainly a, a very intensive review of potential environmental impacts. And I don't think that exists in the record of this site uh, or of this project, excuse me. Uh, the, 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 the jump from what was done for Capella's to the site, particularly thinking about what's changed on this project over the last three years or so, in my opinion, is, is a very big leap. And I think that's something the board needs to consider before you would take any further action on this project. And just not to take up too much of the board's time, uh, I believe the board is also aware of the fact that in the chain of title of this property, there is a covenant against the construction of hotels on this project. Uh, that, that, that comes about from when the property was transferred from previous owners, not the Harrimans, it's not, it's not a Harriman hotel uh, restriction, but it came from the previous owners and their transfer over to Capella's and from Cabela's, then it's in the chain of title over to shops at Woodbury. So uh, overall, I think the project has two major uh, rest development restrictions facing it. And I think that is something the board needs to consider in whether they want to go ahead with the project or not. So that's my comments uh, briefly, trying to stay under the three minutes. And again, I would ask the board to please uh, keep the public hearing open so these issues can be investigated further. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, John Lockman. Uh, Eric, you're Osborne, you're here for Summit, correct? I believe Morty is too. Um, yes, I'm here too. Okay. Uh, C. Harrison. Okay, Timothy Egan. I have nothing, thank you. Uh, he's with H2M and John is, Canning is with you guys. Okay, did I miss anybody in the public that wished to speak to this application? Uh, we did receive one letter today from the building department. Um, Rick, should I read that in or should one written comment? Chris, I think uh, typically I, I don't suggest that um, comments be read in because they can get rather lengthy, but this one was not that lengthy, so it's up to your discretion. And if you want to read it in, um, then it wouldn't take up much time. Okay. So that way the applicant is also aware of it if it hasn't received a copy of it. Yeah, I, that's the only reason I was, sorry, I had the wrong email open. Uh, this was received from uh, Robin Krauss. She lives in Highland Mills. Uh, for the record, I am offered the following comments for the public hearing in the shops of Woodbury. I am opposed to the current plan as submitted. I feel the square footage and the number of uses are too much for this site. I would like to see a pared down version of the submission. The applicant has stated that the project will be phased. I suggest that a smaller version of the project be considered first. The uses are market driven and we are in a state of uncertainty at this point. Additionally, there are too many substantial unresolved issues, water, sewer, traffic, as well as access to the site. I believe these issues should be resolved prior to approval. Finally, if the board is inclined to improve this project as submitted, I suggest, I suggest a condition be imposed that individual uses slash square footage not be allowed to be split in the future like Woodbury Commons has done in the past. This would potentially impact water, sewer, traffic in a negative way. Thank you for consideration of the above, Robin Krauss. And that is the only written comment we received so far in this project. Okay. Members of the board, um, hearing what we've heard from the public so far, um, what is your pleasure with the public hearing? I'll tell you the truth. I think we should keep it open. 
There's been many uh, questions that have been brought forth tonight, and I think that they need investigation. Yes. Uh, I know, Kevin, there was also a request for a mock-up of what the sign would look like. Yes, we have provided um, the detail. It's actually on this sheet. Yeah, we didn't get these submissions yet. So as you know, we could we can't mm -hmm. use the uh, understood comment on this evening. But I would I would like uh, if even if of that uh, you could just submit a mock of what the sign would look like, so it would be available for the public to uh, give input on. It would be greatly appreciated. Sure. Okay. Um, Sandy, how do you feel? I don't see any harm in keeping it open. Okay, Tommy. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'd keep it open. I got definitely got some interest with these hotel restrictions. And Rich. Okay. Uh, you were muted, but I read your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Still muted. Still muted. I agree. Okay. I will offer a motion to continue the public hearing to, um, normally we just do our next meeting, right, Rick? Yeah, it would, um, if you think that this is going to be on your next meeting, then yes, you would have it on your next meeting. If you thought that this was going to be had in two meetings, then you'd continue to that night. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, if I could weigh in, uh, we are working on a uh, resubmission to address uh, the last round of comments that we had received on this. And obviously, you know, as Kevin had shown you that there's signed details now on this version of the plan. M my suggestion would be to actually hold it over to not to the next meeting, but allow us to make this resubmission and then have it on your subsequent meeting. So that way the board will have an opportunity to review everything that we're preparing uh, and then you can uh, review it and it'll be available for the public as well at that time. I think, you know, I understand that the board has concerns and that, and that the, the Harriman family and the owner of the Hilton Garden Inn, uh, you know, have uh, raised questions tonight. Uh, some of these, and I think the majority of those questions actually uh, fall into two categories. One of them is information that's been pending before the board for the last several years as the board has been considering this project. And then the other, you know, aspect of it is relates to uh, private rights of easements uh, between parties, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, has been subject of negotiations and discussions between those parties. And I'll just leave that at that. Um, but uh, I think it would be most helpful uh, rather than just holding it over to your next meeting to hold it over to the subsequent meeting so that we can make that submission. Okay, so the subsequent meeting would be December 2nd. Would you feel comfortable uh, with that date that you'd have your submission in in time for it to be reviewed by our consultants and the board? We understood that the submission date for that meeting would be November 17th, which was what we were working towards. Okay, yeah, that would be, you would be correct. Yeah. Okay, so I will offer a motion to hold the public hearing open till our uh, December 2nd meeting. I second it. A second by Robert. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, and just so that it's clear, Chris, just so it's clear to everyone, um, because this is a continuation of a public hearing, there is no new publication, uh, a notice publication that's required. Um, the notice is done during this meeting. And so uh, the public is on notice simply by your motion that was just had. So nobody should expect that there would be a new publication notice in the paper. Thank you for that. And Rick, I could um, authorize the ESO meeting, right? At this point? Yeah, you can ask for an ESO meeting to be had. Okay, I mean, Natalie, that's... can you draft the memo for that? Yes, we'll, uh, we'll let Maria know and work with her on coordinating and scheduling that. Okay. And Chris, can I just ask a question on what we're looking at right now? Go right ahead, Cindy. Um, Kevin, can, I know you went over quickly what changes were on here, but uh, since we don't have this yet, is there any way to like redline what has changed? I know that that parking space down by the lower portion of the hotel, that that's, that's different from the map that we have, but anything else that's different from the last submission? 
No, no, nothing has changed. Um, that's it. Just that. Just yeah. This was what was reviewed the last time. Um, but we don't have this map, or we don't have this right. This, this rendering. This, this is no, not this rendering. This is the landscape plan that was not. It was not rendered prior. No. Okay. You didn't, you didn't have this. That's correct. Okay. So nothing other than that one portion has changed. Right. Okay. Any other questions from the board for the applicant? No? Okay, Rick, anything else to add? Yeah, I, I have a couple of things that I just wanted to bring up. Sure. Um, one is with respect to the signage. Um, as we had this discussion at the last meeting, um, and the applicant at that point was um, determining, basically saying they, um, they, they wanted to postpone uh, the signage approvals until afterwards because they don't have uh, any tenants right now. And so they um, had said that we will simply um, apply for uh, signage permits that are permitted under the code to Gary. And that's not uh, appropriate that in accordance with the code, when it's in conjunction with a site plan before you, it's the planning board that approves those signs. And so um, I wanted to make that clear for the record. Now, it is not unusual, especially with some commercial projects, that um, the sign aspect, just like ARB sometimes is, is postponed until after the underlying site plan approval. Um, but if they wanted it postponed, if this board agreed to postpone signage, approval of a signage plan, um, that can be done, but they would have to come back to the board to have the signage approved. They could not simply go to the building inspector and ask for a permit for a sign that happened to be within the dimensional allowances in the code. And it's the board's discretion. Um, you can require that there be signage approved now, um, even if they don't have tenants, and then the tenants will have to comply with it or come back for modifications to you, or you could do um, sort of a hybrid where you want to approve some things and you had expressed uh, interest, Mr. Chairman, last time of um, the tenant sign and what that would look like uh, because that has a big impact on um, the application and the visual impact as well. And so um, you could just require that the tenant sign is something that you would approve um, along with this site plan and then defer the others if that's what you wanted. And you don't meet, need to make a determination tonight, obviously, but I wanted to address that issue uh, because I think it's an important one. Um, again, uh, one of the, I think, uh, a fundamental issue that has to get addressed in this board, in my opinion, cannot approve a site plan until the Board of Trustees um, and the applicant uh, agree to um, terms whereby that piece of land is um, transferred over to the applicant or the applicant changes its application to avoid the use of that property. Um, and that's something that just like an owner authorization, you wouldn't be able to go ahead and approve a site plan without uh, the owner of the property uh, agreeing to what is being proposed to you. Um, the I don't know whether the applicant has any agreements, um, either stormwater or other uh, agreements with the state or the county in connection with um, that might affect the site plan. But if they do, I would ask that they submit those uh, agreements to the building department and for us to review. Um, also, um, I believe that Steve Esposito said that this was previously provided, but we couldn't find it. Um, all existing and proposed easements uh, should be listed on the plans and uh, our office should be given copies of all of those um, existing and proposed easements. And we looked, um, Steve, and we could not find it. You said that you had submitted to the building department, but we have not seen those. So if I could uh, ask for you to resubmit those, I'd, I'd appreciate it greatly. Um, also with respect to Seeker, um, as you know, and this was raised by H2M in the past, is that um, one of the things that is clearly different uh, from this project than Cabela's was the amount of uh, the sewer demand that 
um, is happening on this project. And um, as a result, this board needs to um, make a determination as to whether or not the prior seeker was adequate or whether or not um, it needs to be addressed by one way or the other under um, seeker. Um, the applicant um, has discussed at, at some point in time about the possibility of um, some contributions to the village of Woodbury in connection uh, with its sewer capacity needs, such as uh, the village needs I and I done, um, and because its sewer capacity is not unlimited. Um, if in fact there are certain discrete um, uh, fixes, if you will, to the larger sewer demand, this board may entertain um, something that it normally doesn't do, which is a condition negative declaration. Um, but that's something that I just wanted to put out there now so the applicant can consider it and uh, maybe address that issue and for the board to and H2M to keep those things in its mind and memos so they can uh, be addressed. And that's all I have for this evening. Okay, thank you, Rick. Okay, before uh, we let the applicant go for the evening, anybody else from the board or our consultants or from the applicant? No. Right, no. Once, twice. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time this evening, and we will see you back on the 2nd of December. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very thank much you. for your time. Okay. Last, certainly not least, uh, Gluck Summit Properties ARB review application submitted for ARB review of five single family homes located on Summit Avenue in Central Valley. Said property is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps, section 228, block 9, lots 1.22, uh, 1.22, 4.21, 4.241, 4.243. And now I saw Morty and uh, Eric. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, good evening. Morty. All right, you know what, Natalie, why don't we go, uh, we'll go with our consultants first, and then we'll move in to you guys. Um, just just so everybody's aware, Morty, I know I sent an email earlier. All Any documents that were sent via email today, we cannot review or use tonight to discuss uh, because our consultants and this board has, have not had time to uh, properly vet and look them over. But just keeps everybody in a pay, uh, level playing field here. All right. Uh, Natalie, you want to go ahead first? Sure. Uh, this application is for consideration of ARB and Ridge Preservation for five homes as part of a previously approved subdivision. Uh, in order to make a decision on these code requirements, you should consider the proposed colors, materials, uh, exposure of the homes on the lots and limits of clearing, <laughs> among other criteria that's spelled out in the code and also summarized in our memo. Uh, at this point, we think it would be appropriate for the board to consider any uh, materials that you would need to sort of help make this determination uh, on what is acceptable to you. Uh, we suggest a couple of things in our memo, including listing the height of the rear of the homes on the plans uh, to assess the exposure and the visibility according to Ridge Preservation. Uh, we also think it would be appropriate to discuss the renderings that were provided and whether or not they represent the actual setting or just a typical setting. Um, we also think it would be helpful for uh, the applicants to provide uh, information about the neighboring homes um, so that you can consider similarity and dissimilarity according to ARB. Uh, as you stated, the applicant did submit some plans today which show the limits of clearing and also um, landscaping proposed, which is appropriate. And as you said, we didn't have time to review that thoroughly, uh, which we will for the future meeting. Uh, one thing we wanted to note is, although the applicant did submit detailed site plans, this is for ARB and Ridge Preservation. 
Uh, so where you are reviewing the clearing limits and the landscaping, that's acceptable, but ultimately the, the site plan and uh, the utilities uh, will be decided on Gary when they apply for a building permit. Uh, and if Rick has anything to offer on that, we defer to his advice always. <laughs> um, what else? We also think that what the applicant has provided now as far as colors uh, and floor plans, you may have enough to discuss whether or not you think those materials and colors are acceptable and also uh, the volume of the homes uh, and size. Our memo lists a table of living area compared to other homes that were approved as part of the subdivision. Uh, and <laughs> note that the proposed homes are approximately 20 to 49% larger. Uh, and what we haven't included there is the unfinished spaces in those homes. Uh, and you'll see in the floor plans that there are large unfinished spaces. <laughs> Basically, um, the degree of variance in uh, the size of structures that have already been constructed and what's being proposed would just be increased. Um, also, our memo notes that there were conditions of the resolution for the subdivision uh, that we've requested the applicant uh, verify that they've been completed and uh, that all is acceptable there. And I think that pretty much summarizes what we have for now. If you guys have any questions, we have to help answer them. Thank you, Natalie. Any questions for Natalie? All right, Jonathan. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Um, our memorandum was uh, dated October 28th, and uh, we really uh, uh, came to very similar conclusions as the uh, engineering firm. Um, we uh, noted that uh, they have provided plot plans, but they do not include uh, proposed landscaping uh, and limits of, of clearing. Um, the, uh, the size of the structures uh, in the, when I looked at the, uh, the different figures and made the table that's on page three of our memo, uh, I just looked at the gross overall uh, floor area because uh, from a planning perspective, if uh, someone's basement is unfinished or if half the upstairs is unfinished, it doesn't make the house smaller. Uh, the house is still the same size as it is on the outside. So when you're, if, if you're trying to evaluate how big something is, saying that you know half of the floor area inside isn't going to be fitted out uh, with rugs and wallpaper or whatever really doesn't make, uh, isn't that useful. So that's why I went with the gross figures and I hope you may find that helpful in your evaluation when you're trying to figure out uh, similarity or dissimilarity standards. Um, and uh, also uh, ridge preservation, uh, we uh, listed that uh, you are supposed to be looking at no removal of eight inch or greater caliper trees and without the landscaping plan, without the limits of clearing and without knowing what trees are, are being removed, you're not gonna be able to, um, to make those uh, determinations. Um, so really uh, uh, we appreciate that the applicants submitted the, uh, the various plot plans. Also, we had noted that uh, you had wanted to know lot coverage in terms of the impact of how much of each site would be covered. And on lot number six, they had been missing uh, lot coverage provided, but that may have been covered in uh, some of the, uh, the newer, the uh, newer submittals received that haven't been reviewed yet. And that's our report. Thank you, Jonathan. Any questions for Jonathan? Um. Just quickly on the, the, the trees to be removed. Haven't, hasn't the board in past, um, s some past developments, I mean, I wasn't on the board at that time, but didn't they ask for like a, uh, almost like a map of what trees would be, were to be removed? Yes, uh, a landscaping plan would typically show uh, X's through the big trees taken out and uh, which would be the tree removals. 
And one of the points Natalie made is some of this work may have been done uh, with the subdivision. Uh, you know, uh, there, there may be some detail that was done during the development of the subdivision on each of these lots, but, we, but they, they need to, to take that out and, and, and look at that. Um, but yes, usually uh, we're presented with a tree removal plan for anything over eight inches in ridge protection. Okay, because Chris, and I don't know how the rest of the board feels. Um, I think it would be wise if we did a, a site visit on this parcel. Just, you know. Well, they're five, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't just, I drove up there probably last week and the, the I guess the back lots that go against WP are, are fairly heavily um, wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the lots on the other side of the street have some of them been cleared, but not all of them. So I definitely think um, I think it was a tree survey or something. It was called. I know we've talked yeah, about this. Right, one. that's correct. And I think it would be helpful for your site visit to kind of understand where those limits of clearing would be, and then the applicant could mark the trees that are proposed to remain or removed uh, that are greater than eight inches. Yeah, because I know when we went up to, um, I think it was Apple Hill Estates, that house there, it really, it really made a difference to, to be able to see what was being going to be taken down and where the house was going to be placed and everything. Absolutely. And so if we could get that done maybe before the, the snow flies. <laughs> typically our, Even though it's flowing uh, already. <laughs> it'll be hot this weekend. <laughs> uh, typically stakes are just driven into the um, corners of the building, driveway. <laughs> So it gets an, we can get an overall feel for how the house would be situated on the lot. Um, you know, and you just, you know, back right, front right, driveway, right? And that's what we've done in the past, if I remember correctly. They kind of just flag it and stake it and go from there. Yeah, just so we can get a visual, especially since there's ridge preservation involved. Um, so if you guys could do that, that'd be great. And then... Um, just let the building department know when it's done. Um, I don't think we need to set a specific date for a site visit because it's uh, relatively easy to get up there. Um, unless we want to set a date or that's up to you. Well, I think it depends on when they can get it done. Right? You're muted, Eric. So, so we can notify the boards when we have it done, send an email to the building department, say that all the property corners, house corners, driveways have been staked, and then the board can make a decision when they want to go. Right. Will, the, will the trees be marked also at that point? Whatever trees will be removed? Well, if we need to, to mark those trees to be removed, we'll do that too. Uh, it, like, like, like what was discussed before, that you show where the house, driveway, all that goes septic. Uh, well, all that area has to be cleared in order to get a house there. <laughs> That's I think, true. I think and what, then in addition to that, any trees that are greater than eight inch at <laughs> diameter at breast height should also be marked that are proposed for removal. Um, and that'll be within the limits of clearing to create your yard and others. Okay. Other. Okay. We can do that. And that would be okay, Rick, if they just notify the building department, right? We don't need to set a specific date. That's correct. And then everybody can kind of just go up there on their time and take a look. So then we'll be, we'll just receive an email and we can do it. I think that's, I think that's easier than trying to coordinate. You know, we run into the problem with the five of us trying to coordinate schedules. And now that the day, nights are getting a little shorter, you know, it's dark by five o'clock, soon to be four. <laughs> but it's okay that we're just, I mean, we don't need anything to be up there. We actually have a new form that they signed that gives us permission to be on the property Monday through Friday, eight to eight for this type of. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, it does. Some brilliant minds that, that thought of that, uh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't mine. <laughs> no, it wasn't mine either. I can't take all the credit, but I Google very well. <laughs> um, all right. The, so the other question was the colorings on... This is where I miss in public meetings because now I'm going to be like this. The, 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 the <laughs> rendering, the colors and stuff that are on the on the renderings that were given us are these just 
colors that you picked randomly or are these the colors that you think will be the final final product? Uh, uh, these are colors pretty close to what we think is final. <clears throat> All right, we listed the colors somewhere. Is there a... There is an ARB application, but I use it for each. Yeah, so if I recall correctly, I think for each home, a separate ARB application was submitted, um, and that should identify all the colors and the materials proposed. It was. Correct. From yeah. August 11. And we would assume that uh if a, if a uh, elevation is shown with particular colors or that 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 those are going to be the colors uh if the applicant wants to change those need to resubmit correct yep. mm -hmm. the colors stake out what else what else what else am i missing guys and girls and we see a, a rendering of the back of the house Besides, besides just the sketch, it's like a picture. You're rendering this. Okay. We'll have to do those. Your house rendering. Anything else? Tommy, Sandy, Rick? I have a couple of comments whenever you want me to weigh in. Well, I just I wanted to point out before you start, Rick, that for each one, an elevation, it's not a, it's not like a, um, a simulation or a rendering, but there's an actual uh, elevation of the rear, rear wall for each of the houses provided on the elevations page. So you can see how, how, how high it'll look in that manner. Did you want something different than that, Robert? <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I would like something different. I, I really need to see it uh, visually, uh, an actual picture or a rendering of, of what the back is going to look like, other than just a sketch version with, you know, dimensions and so forth. That's similar to the pictures that we have at the front of the house. Right, right, yeah, yeah. similar yeah. to the front. So you really want a, a, a rendering and not just an rendering. elevation view, not, not just a flat elevation view. Now, I think uh, one of the memos, there was some question about the different uh, varieties of roof lines on the uh, these houses. Do we have that information, you know, as far as which roofs think, are more peaked than the others? Well, but if you if you flip from page to page on the elevations, you can see yeah. you can see the roof lines cl clearly. <laughs> That's one thing that is, I think, easier to understand from an elevation drawing than from a from a perspective or a rendering uh, because you can really uh, compare them one 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 to another uh, if you look at the rear elevations and the side elevations you can see exactly what you know how, how the roof lines the relationships um, in the drawing set I have Typically, the elevations were called A1 in each case, A-1 in each case for the five lots. All right, so, but can we still see a picture like the front? I think it really, it does make a difference when you see it. Yeah, if you want it, you can ask for it, yes. Yeah, that's fine. I think Eric's got it right yes. on his left. Okay. You wanna go ahead, Rick, with your Sure. Um, I, I want to underscore what Natalie had brought up, and it's also in my memo to you. Um, there were a number of conditions in the original subdivision that I have not been able to find any proof that they were complied with. Um, and so the applicant needs to provide proof um, that these conditions were accomplished. Um, they dealt with uh, various easements and deed restrictions. <coughs> Um, uh, of various and Im important aspects of this project. Um, and if the applicant has any um, uncertainty as to which ones they are, um, they can contact Natalie or they can contact me and, and we can identify them very specifically. 
Um, but th it's very important. And this board is not going to be approving anything until those things are confirmed that they have been accomplished. If they have not yet been accomplished, it means that it will take some time to accomplish. So that's why I'm suggesting that um, attention be paid to it now rather than waiting until the last minute. The other thing I wanted to do is um, just for the board, because you don't deal with ridge preservation that much. Um, and a, a lot of times in the past, it seems like ARB and ridge preservation seem to sort of get fused into just the same look at it. And it's, they're very different. And so I just want to spend just a minute or two just underscoring for the board um, the different analysis you have to have between ARB and ridge preservation. Now, ARB is your typical thing of, as uh, Natalie and also uh, Jonathan were talking about, looking at the houses, looking at their design and color, size, similarity, dissimilarity. Um, that's your typical ARB, the materials that are involved, uh, et cetera. Ridge preservation is very different. Um, although some of the same elements such as color and visibility are certainly there, but it's a very different analysis that you have. And I went through some of that in my memo to you, but um, just to highlight, uh, in ridge preservation, you're really looking at that, what is the impact of these designated view corridors? And I'm not sure that the planning board members know exactly where these view corridors are. Uh, both H2M and NPV traditionally have guided when there have been big projects and dealing with ridge preservation, um, have identified for the board uh, where those view corridors are so that you can actually go there, stand in that view corridor and look down at the project, especially after it's staked and try to figure out whether or not there's gonna be any problems with ridge preservation, because that's what you're really looking at. It's not just a street view, it's just a view from these scenic corridors. That's what you're protecting under ridge preservation for these uh, homes uh, above elevation 600. Um, I mean, there are easy things like not reflective windows. Um, the structures have to be constructed of natural materials, wood, brick, or stone, be even natural color. Um, but the roof cannot be visible um, from any of those um, view corridors, or it must blend into the hillside. And I think unless you actually know where these view corridors are and then take a look yourself, you're not going to know um, from plans submitted uh, whether or not it's going to be visible or whether it's going to be blending into the hillside. Um, because it may be, even though there's vegetation now, where they're clearing may just allow this home to stick out like a sore thumb in this view corridor. Uh, and so then you have to decide, should we put it on a different section of this uh, parcel? Or do we have to supplement what's there with respect to evergreen or deciduous trees? All of this is required as part of the ridge preservation. So I think if you look at my memo, that will help a lot. I've tried to make it easy um, picking out the relevant parts of the code. Um, but I think it's, it's a decidedly different analysis for the board members as to the ridge preservation review versus an ARB. And, and this that's is it. Like something where a balloon, almost a balloon test would almost be handy if we wanted to see how the house would look from various ridge corridors. If, if, if that was warranted, it's not necessarily warranted. And also the applicant has the ability to try to have a photo simulation to help you with that. Right. There's, there's ways to do that where they can, with somebody with credentials, um, to be able to do that is to superimpose what is being done from a point on the uh, view corridor, the scenic corridor, and give you a view as to what would happen. Um, and it also may be very clear, and a lot of times we've had um, the Ridge Preservation Review where the board members have said, well, it's so clear you'll never see this house just because of the way that it's situated on the hillside. And then you don't need a lot more than that. But, but you don't really know that until those homes are identified and you take a look from the view corridors. And I, I know that uh, both H2M and MPV, uh, I don't have it, otherwise I'd provide it, but they have you know, where these view corridors specifically are 
can provide that information to the board so that you can look at that in addition to your site visit. Well, also there, uh, as you, when you started, you were talking about what was, what were the conditions of approval for the subdivision itself? A lot of those issues, the framework for how uh, rich preservation would be handled in the future as each house went in, you know, were, are often handled at the subdivision stage. And I'm not familiar with this subdivision approval um, and as to whether there are any specific rich preservation related conditions. Yeah, and I think, Rick, that's a really great point. And um, it's actually just for the board's information on the zoning map, the ridge corridors are shown in, mm -hmm. um, it's like a green hatching. I can share my screen if you're interested in looking at it now or in sure. future submissions, we can kind of highlight that in our memo. It's up to you. We take 30 seconds to look at it right now. Yeah, okay, I great. think that'd be helpful. Yeah. I forgot that it was on the zoning map. Thank you, Natalie. Yeah, no problem. So can you guys see what I'm looking at here with the zoning map? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the proposed subdivision property, I believe. That's correct, yes. And I'll show it to you also on Google Earth. This is Oak Concourse, just adjacent to WP3. Um, so this is this area. And then this green here is Route 17, and that is a ridge corridor, a ridge preservation corridor. Similarly, 32 is one, and then up here also 105. And you can see on the legend, not to move around too, too quickly, but that's identified in the green. So basically for this application, that's where you would be considering the viewpoint. Um, and we would have to, basically assess what the most visible location along this area would be. And we will do that for our future memos. Wait, Natalie, you said that's 17 or is that 32? I think this is 17. <laughs> oh, it turns into 32. That's correct. Sorry, Sandy. Okay. 32. No, because I was trying to orient myself to the map. Okay. And then the one beside it is the throughway? The throughway. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So yeah, it, you know, we'll look at the topography and see uh, it will be basically what's cleared in this area and then also at the highest elevation along this ridge corridor that uh, you would have the most impact on this area. Yeah, if you'd be able to address that in a future memo. Uh, now Absolutely. That's a really good point. Thank you for calling it to our attention. Thank you for that, Rick. Anything else, Rick and Natalie? No, I have nothing further. Me neither. I'm almost set. Thank you, Jonathan. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, um, I previously was brought up and one of, one, of the, one of the speakers noted that the size of a home uh, is, is considered when you talk about a big garage or a big basement, or maybe even I may add a big attic. In my construction experience and in all the towns that I've been working in, um, unfinished space is considered unfinished space. That's not considered living space, and that doesn't really count for a size of a home. Somebody has a big unfinished basement. Let's say they build a ranch of 1,800 square feet. There is a big, big basement of 1,800 square feet. Nobody would call that a big basement, or not, I mean, they call it a big basement, but they wouldn't call it a big home because it has because that ranch has a big basement that's unfinished. So uh, I'm a little confused with that comment. I think that, well, Rick, that falls under the whole cubicle content. Yes. So uh, the, si the size of the home, including cubicle contents, it's the visual impact under ARB that you're looking at. So whether or not something can be seen but is unfinished is irrelevant, as Jonathan was saying. Yeah, I mean, if you had a, a 6,000 square foot house and you didn't, and you didn't finish it on the inside, it would, it would look a certain way from the street. And after you finished it on the inside, it wouldn't look any bigger. Uh, if you leave it unfinished, so, it'll look a certain size. And if you finish it on the inside, it'll look the same size. So how the appearance so, uh, of how a house looks in compared to its setting really has nothing to do with um, the finishings inside. It's really the volume. So if you have a, a 
6,000 square foot ranch that has a 6,000 square foot basement. Would you look at that as a 12,000 square foot home? I guess it would depend on, on how much of the basement was above grade. And if it was next to a 12,000 square foot house that was half finished, I wouldn't say they were the same size. Okay, you know, so, uh, you, okay, you so. wouldn't look at a 6,000 square foot ranch next to a 12,000 square foot two-story house and say, this two-story house, I didn't finish the upstairs, so it's the same size as the ranch. Okay, so above uh, grade is the, is, the, is the issue. Yeah, the volume, yeah. It's re and, it's, and it's a comparison of that to its surroundings. The whole idea is for a house not to be inappropriately dissimilar and when you're comparing it how you finished off the inside really isn't that important in how big the house looks compared to surrounding houses and the design of the home comes into play as well i mean if there, the predominant um type of residence was um lower homes such as ranches and other things and you now propose a two and a half to three story home that has to be analyzed by the board as to whether or not is it's excessively dissimilar um, in the neighborhood and the surrounding areas so it's there's no really um, mathematical um, calculation that you say well this one passes and this one fails the board has to take a look at the entirety in its context uh, with the neighborhood and the, and the area surrounding the neighborhood in order to try to determine whether or not the ARB is proposed is appropriate. So have these homes that we presented, are they off from the homes that are over there in the area? I don't know if the board has made that determination yet. No, you haven't provided that information. That's what we're asking. For you to well, I think okay. there are renderings available, but there is also information available on Orange County GIS um, regarding footprint and livable area, which we tried to summarize in our memo. It's absolutely up to the applicant to verify that and also um, if they have additional information, they can provide it. But it's a good opportunity for the board to consider just that living area and already how the proposed homes are larger by 20 and 49 percent considering the smallest and the largest home in that same subdivision um, and then if you add in that unfinished space again it just increases the size and the difference among the other homes so that's something again just for you to consider yeah and and you know this isn't uh, a, a new thing we're asking back in, in March, I had comment five of my previous memo was, uh, you know, what are, how does the size of these houses relate to the surroundings? And I heard some, some other voices, uh, I, uh, I don't I don't have any other further comments. Okay. So Was can that, we have this continued as a as a as open for the next meeting? Yeah, it would be part of your next it would be it would be one of the it's one of your takeaway items for your next submittal. Right. Okay, great. Okay. Does any so anybody else have any other questions for this applicant or does the applicant have any more questions for us? I think you got some uh, homework tonight uh, that you have to get together and then resubmit and we'll, um, and then also let us know when the staking is done and then we'll go out there and we'll take a look and that will, you know, kind of help move. And then the board can also look around the neighborhood while they're there and take a look at the surrounding, uh, you know, structures and neighborhood. Does the applicant have any idea about approximately when he could get that done? We can work as best as we can to, okay. to, to get this done, uh, let's say by the next hearing. Okay, just like I said, just let the building department know and then we'll get the word out. All right, everybody else okay? okay. Everybody else good? Yes. Eric, yeah. Eric, you're good, you understood? 
Good. Okay, good. All right, Rick, and I think you said you were done too, right? Yes. All right. Uh, with no further business, I'll make a motion to close. I'll oh, second. Uh, pick, pick two. <laughs> oh, have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. Good night. Good night. Now, get me out on the road.